Inference Plus Story Short Number 19, Series A. The steady roar of the waves was the first sound Julie registered as she began to wake. She reached out her right hand to push the button on the white noise machine beside her bed and was jolted the rest of the way awake when her hand did not hit the smooth plastic button, but instead sank into sand. It didn't happen often anymore, but it never failed to make her heart race when it did. In the first months here, that moment of cognitive dissonance had been a daily occurrence. That had been the worst time. She pulled herself up from the woven mat of her bed and stretched. It had rained during the night, so she took the pounded metal bowls and drained them all into the battered thermos before heading down to check the fish trap in the bay. Two globbles. She wouldn't be hungry today. She knew that Globbles wasn't the actual name, but she didn't know the actual name, and it wasn't like she could Google it. Next, she took her morning swim in the bay. When she'd first come here, she'd established a rigid schedule in order to create a sense of order over the sudden chaos into which she'd found herself. Eleven years later, she still stuck to the routine, but it had taken on a much more natural rhythm. It had taken time for Julie to realize how lucky she was. She hadn't felt lucky in those early days, one lonely woman floating for weeks in an escape raft, too sunbaked and thirsty to ponder her future. In her intermittent bouts of lucidity, she mourned her husband and sons, who, unlike her, hadn't made it to a raft. By the time she washed up here, she'd given up everything, her hope, her expectations, her entire life from before. But she was alive, Despite all the odds, she was alive. Julie's entire life before had been a study in mediocrity. Mediocre grades, mediocre job, mediocre marriage. Ironically, it was this very lack of exceptionality that had benefited her the most. She approached life on the island with the same head-down plodding with which she'd approached everything else in her life before. She expected no praise and didn't need it. She was content with her own company. In many ways, Julie had grown to love her life here, the way that it allowed her to be free to live her life without the burden of anyone else's expectations. She wasn't the first to land on this island. The rusted-out fuselage of an old twin-engine plane was evidence of that. The first time she saw it, she recoiled from the clean white skeletons inside, but that horror had long since faded. The plane contained treasures beyond rubies, a toolkit, metal from the plane's body, and, most importantly, a trunk full of books. Classic books. All the books she'd been assigned to read in school, but hadn't, instead relying on cheat books. She read them then, devouring each one the way she devoured the fish and the coconuts that comprised her meals. Now she knew them all by heart. In the early days, she had lit a signal fire and diligently fed it day and night. But as the days turned to weeks, the weeks to months, and the months to years, she had abandoned the enterprise and settled into this season of her life. She kept a signal fire ready to light if a planer ship appeared, but she had long since stopped clinging to the dream of rescue. Her only fire now was the small one she used for cooking and light. If she was totally honest with herself, she had come to love her life here, the sense of purpose and satisfaction. Besides, there was nothing from her before life left anyway, except, of course, doctors. She had developed a worrisome lump in her left breast a few months ago, and her first thought was, I should get this checked out, before she burst into a fit of laughter. Old habits die hard. When she saw the frigate, it was a tiny pin dot on the horizon. Less attentive eyes might have mistaken it for a whale or a wave, but Julie recognized the outline of a ship. She sat on the beach and listened to the murmur of the waves, as she watched it move slowly northward. She sighed and moved closer to her cooking fire, stirring the coals with a hardened stick.